have a shadow today. Could it be because I'm getting my suitcase ready to go? Are you ready to go in the truck, Diesel? Yeah, the truck's out there. We're gonna go in the pickup, and then we're gonna go in the big truck. Going all the way to British Columbia. We're gonna stop in Saskatchewan along the way. So it's time to leave again, and Diesel knows it somehow. Chevy's just excited because Diesel's excited. <laughs> but I told Diesel yesterday that we're gonna go on a trip today, and he woke up this morning, and he will not stop following me. He's right behind me. Everywhere I go. Just... <laughs> yeah, Diesel. You ready to go, Diesel? <laughs> Diesel! Diesel! Oh my god, Diesel! We're back at the truck, man! You wanna go in the truck? Oh, I do. I sure do. Holy smokeronies, Diesel. We're here! It's real! We're actually back. I just gotta do up bed yet. Until then, you gotta stay on your seat cover here, okay? I'm actually pretty impressed. Apparently, I kept this truck pretty clean. I got in here, I was like, was this truck detailed? I was looking at a few spots, like, no, it definitely wasn't detailed. Oh, that's right, we cleaned it before we left. Because I like to detail it myself before the shop gets into it, just so that they get into a clean truck. Because I have a dog with me, right? And it's the same thing as at home. You gotta vacuum and clean multiple times a day just to make sure that it doesn't seem like a dog lives there, right? And uh, I wanna make sure that this truck always looks like or I want to always be sure, how do I say it? I always want to be sure that it does not look like a dog lives in this truck with me as much as possible. I mean, I do what I can, but got to keep your truck clean. It's also healthier, you know? These days, uh, we're all talking about health. Hey, keep your truck clean. I'm speaking to myself here. I'm not the best at this, okay? I'm not the one to look to for, uh, to, to be a role model on this, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect at all. Just ask Britt. <laughs> But I'm getting better. She'll tell you I'm getting better. All right, Diesel, we're, we got brand new drive tires on this truck. I'm just in the yard here. I'm just gonna go find my trailer. Uh, what trailer number? Okay. Find my trailer and uh, yeah, we got brand new drives. Just in time for winter. That's perfect. Got all the stuff out of the pickup. New tires. It's wonderful, wonderful. Now I just need to find my, my trailer. Diesel, keep your eye open, okay? There's so many trailers in our yard right now. We just got a whole bunch of new, uh, I'd say new trucks and new trailers in our yard. And it's just plugged up everything. Everything is plugged up. We need a bigger yard now. <laughs> there she is, Weasel. There she was. that pass this time but remember next time you gotta hold on a little tighter look at these new drives oh, oh. <laughs> nice I'm very excited that is awesome just in time for winter that's perfect I didn't even know they were gonna replace them all but I'm glad they did truck got a full service she's ready to go We don't hear any leaks coming from there. We do hear this suspension down here adjusting because I charged the trailer or put air into the trailer. Go back here. These axles are really far forward. So we do have some routes that are going to California now from what I've heard. I haven't been uh, selected to take one yet, 
I'm okay if I don't go to California, but I, I wouldn't mind going to the southwest of the U.S. We have a whole bunch of new routes down there. I wouldn't mind checking them out. Oh, this trailer I think is set up for California. 42 feet is right here. And that's at the center of the rear axle. In California, that's as far back as you can have them legally. 41 feet to the center of the rear axle. Or is it 42 feet to the center of the rear axle? 42 feet to the center of the rear axle. However, the rest of the normal world, that same limit can be at the center of the axles. So I'm going to move these axles back a couple of feet and that'll give us a smoother ride going down the road. The shorter your wheelbase, the, uh, the rougher the ride over the bridge connections and rough roads. We have a pretty light load on us, so shouldn't really make a difference either way. But I'd rather have a smoother ride. Let's move them back. All right, you saw them move, right? Just a little bit further, so I'm gonna set the pins here. And then pull forward and let them lock in. You can hear that suspension adjusting because when I pull the trailer back like this, it's taking weight off of these tires and putting them onto my drive tires on the back of my semi truck. So it's shifting weight to the front. There's less weight on these, that's why it's adjusting. I could actually go back a little further yet. 41 feet, sorry, I said 42 before, right? 41 feet from the kingpin to the center of the axle group. Ignore what I said before, I meant 41. That's what I mean. When I give you guys advice and stuff, always double check me, okay? Just to be sure. 41 feet. Now, how do you figure out where 41 feet is if you don't have a convenient marker like that? Let me show you. So that's your kingpin right there, and it's at the center of this four foot section here. You see each one of these sections from this line here, this line here, each of these panels is four feet long. Okay, now 41 feet from the center of this. Okay, so 10 of these panels would be 40 feet, right? So you go from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. The center of this panel is 40 feet. You add one more foot, what do you get? 41 feet. That's how you figure it out if you don't have a little arrow here. Okay, each one of these panels, it's four feet. We can go back a little bit further yet. Just a touch, just a touch back. How's it look guys? Center, okay, so we gotta go a little bit back now, okay? So we'll set these pins. You see they're not gonna set in there yet because they're there. We're gonna set them into that hole there, okay? So I gotta go back. Just a touch. Just a touch. Just a touch. You wait there. Tell me when it's, tell me when I'm, when I'm good, okay? What do you guys think? So center of the axle group? It's very close. We could actually go back one more. Shoot. Yeah, we could go back. Wait, no. Forward. That's as close as we can get it. Shoot. Yeah, that's right, because we were too far that way. The other way. Now I came back. Yeah, that's as close as we're going to get it. Okay? You don't want to have that arrow on that side, because then you're too long of a wheelbase. And there we go. So the way you do that is you release the trailer brakes and the truck brakes, put it in gear and spike the trailer brakes with the trailer brake handle beside your steering wheel or wherever it is. Spike it and then just pull. You just have to release these here. We have this mechanical arm. Some people have uh, air air arms that you just push a button and the, the, the pins go in. It seemed really easy to do this now because the weather's warm. When the weather gets down to minus 50 and you got to slide those things and they're all caked in snow and ice. It's not as easy and it's not nearly as fun. Just before we go though, just before we go, very important. Oh yeah. The smell of new rubber. 
Oh, that's so good. I love the smell of new tires. Let's check all the lights. Marker light is working. Wait for it. Signal light is working. I have checked all the tires. There's air in them. Let me show you. Air, so much better than flat tires. I like them so much more. All right, marker light on, ABS light off. Signal light working. Show me the brakes. Show me the brakes. Brake light's working. Check these ones, is there air? Air, filled with compressed air. That is fantastic. Signal light's working, and the marker light's working in there as well. Beautiful. Rock on. Got my new phone here. Very nice. So an update on my dad, I guess I should because I just released that video from yesterday saying dad's in the hospital. He's doing good. We still haven't gotten any of the test results back yet that we need before he can go through with his other tests in Winnipeg. We're still waiting on that, but he's feeling great. He's making jokes. He'll be just fine, I think. He'll be just fine. Uh, he's in good spirits. I'll keep you updated if anything or when anything new happens. West corner of Winnipeg here on the perimeter headed west and I just want to share with you the logic of Winnipeg just a little bit here all right now it's hard to tell from the camera where I'm at now on the road but you just have to picture it in your head so behold to the left we have the largest landfill in the province as far as I know or one of the biggest ones Brady Road landfill to the right we have a new development being built residential very expensive. All right, the houses are going probably from around 500 and a million dollars, say 800,000. It's expensive. Okay, lots of zeros to our right. Now, whenever summertime comes around and things heat up, all right, the ground heats up, all that garbage in the landfill over there heats up, we get a south wind from our friendly southern neighbors. And that warm air sweeps over the landfill, over the hill there, right into this new development. Okay, and that's hot, stinky garbage air every summer. That's what this whole area here smells like. So why, Winnipeg, why are you building a new residential development literally across the street from Brady Road Landfill when you know those, south, those winds that come from the south every summer are going to blow all that stinky air right into those people's houses? Buyer beware. All right, if you're going to buy in this new development, it's going to stink all summer why i don't know winnipeg that's why i figured i'd let you know that look they got a nice new fence up here very nice it's gonna be a beautiful neighborhood don't get me wrong it's gonna be beautiful but brady road landfill is just over here look you got all these seagulls these trash pigeons flying around here all the time they're gonna be dumping all over their roofs and cars just over there to the right what in the world? <laughs> Who signed off on that one, okay? And who's buying those houses? Because I'm not gonna put that many zeros behind any house that I buy in the path of that kind of stinky air. I don't know. What do you guys think? Any of you from the area, any of you own a house, a new house, any of you building houses in that area? Are you the developer? 
let me know down below in the comments section. I want to know, what are they thinking? What are they doing? I wouldn't buy a house there, just saying. Thought that was an interesting uh, story to tell you there. Winnipeg, eh? Winnipeg. <laughs> I'm really curious about that. I, I, I'm kind of curious of what, what are these properties going to be valued at? Because all of the neighborhoods surrounding it, like outside of the, the stinky air zone, like all these new developments coming up, those houses are not cheap. They're going, for, I'd say like around, like I said, $500,000 to $800,000 in the neighborhoods all around it. And that's expensive for Winnipeg, all right? Houses like that would probably be worth like $3 million in Toronto or Vancouver. So if you're from those areas, picture a $3 million Toronto home in a suburb with just disgusting garbage air all day long. And you just signed the mortgage, you signed all the papers, you just you just took $800,000 from the bank and now you gotta pay that back. And how are you gonna sell that house when every time you have a showing, everybody gets stinked out? I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking about it because we just bought our house and sold our house. If I went to go view a house and I got to the house and it stank like that outside, there's no way I'd buy it. And there's no way I'd spend like $500,000 or more on it. No way. So I'm just curious, when it goes up, what are the property values gonna be, you know? And what are the resale values gonna be? When they start realizing it's a bad, stinky neighborhood, uh, I wonder, I wonder how much they're gonna be able to sell them for and how much they're gonna lose. Those poor homeowners. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, this is just my opinion. These are thoughts that go through my head when I drive past there, so. Do you think, do you have the same thoughts? Or maybe, maybe you know the area, maybe you know something I don't know. Is it all gonna be okay? Do they got like giant air fresheners that they're installing on every block or what? How are they, how are they working that? Timmy's, Timmy's. Look at these fancy new pumps. Wow. Very nice. Dual trailers this lane. I like that they put that sign there, but you know no one's gonna listen to it. I would, but hey, you know a lot of guys aren't gonna listen to it. Maybe you would too, I don't know. You all know no one's gonna listen to that. There's always those guys out there. I'm gonna park in the back here with these fine ladies and gentlemen, or fine gentlemen. And go in there and get myself a nice coffee and some supper. Diesel, you wait in here, okay? You wait in here. I don't gotta get my sweater on because it's getting a little nipply out there already. You know what, this time last year, we had over a foot of snow on the ground already. Now it's like 16 Celsius outside. It's what, like in the 50s Fahrenheit? Much better year this year, tell you what. Okay, Diesel, you wait here, all right? I'm gonna go get some Timmy's. I will return victorious. Told you I'd return victorious. And you doubted me. <laughs> all right, I also got uh, air fresheners. Since Britt convinced me to buy one for the pickup, Figure maybe I should get some for the big truck too. They're actually pretty nice. I couldn't get the same scent. Oh, oh, they already smell good. Cool, this truck's gonna be smelling good. Hopefully it's not too strong because I gotta live in here. I gotta be careful what air fresheners I use in the big truck because I live in here 24 seven when I'm on the road and the and, and diesel too. And uh, we can't uh, always have it too strong. Otherwise it's, you know, <laughs> chokes us. How's this work? How's this? I gotta pull this out? How's this? That goes in, that goes in there. Oh, well, this is a different brand, I guess. Oh no. What are we doing? Guess we just pull this out. Nice. Okay, well, don't want that to be too strong. How does this, ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, so then I just, uh, I'll only take you guys on here. Look at this. I guess I just uh, 
plant that right there. Oh, well, doesn't want to really stay very well. There, that. There we go. What do you think, Diesel? What do you think? Very nice. I hope it'll smell nice. Let's start her up and find out. And off we go. It's about five hours to Yorkton. Oh, good. They put markings on the pavement now. No parking. That should stop at least one or two people from parking there. ourselves a parking spot at the Petro Pass here. There's not too many spots available here usually, but maybe we'll get lucky. I guess we shall see. Sometimes it gets pretty full here, other times there's nobody here at all. Here we are. Josh and a weasel anyways that's it for tonight boys and girls found ourselves a parking spot here tomorrow morning we start delivering right here in Yorkton Saskatchewan then we head down to Regina Saskatchewan for tomorrow afternoon and then we head to British Columbia I believe I've got uh, stops in uh, let's see here <clears throat> let's see if I can get this out of here Okay, we have stops Yorkton and then Regina, and then our next stop is Vernon, British Columbia, then Kamloops, British Columbia, Chilliwack, British Columbia, Port Alberni, British Columbia, and then we end off in Campbell River, British Columbia. And we'll probably be done there Thursday evening or or Friday morning. We'll see. We'll see. But uh Thanks for joining me today anyways, guys. I appreciate it. So far, uh, from my, uh, reports of my dad says that he's doing the same. He's doing great. He's in good spirits and just probably a little lonely, but he won't admit it. But he's doing good. And uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll have, have the results of the uh, virus test. And then he can get on with all the other stuff he's got to go through. And then he can get back to life. I'll let you know. Talk to you tomorrow, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. We sort of hit a roof or a wall again with subscribers, and that's totally cool. Doesn't bother me that much, but if you want to help the channel, tell your friends. Maybe they like it too. Tell them to subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.